Okay, welcome back. This is chapter 12. This is section 12-2. This is recording number one. Okay, so in chapter 12, we're talking about the so-called analysis of variance, and the short, short version of analysis of variance is that an, the ANOVA, analysis of variance, is a method whereby we look at three or more means and we ask the question, is there a significant difference between one or more of these means and the other means? So you have mean one, mean two, mean three, and so forth. You put them all together in the one-way analysis of variance, that was section 12.1, and you decide yes there is or no there isn't a significant difference. Now the strange part about this, the two strange things about this is that it's you're using the variances not the means for the test. It's beyond the scope of this class to prove that that works but that's what you're using is you're using variance to decide is there a big deal difference between the various means. Okay that's number one strange thing. Strange thing number two is that at the end of that test you don't know which of the means is the weird guy. Is it x bar sub 1? Is it x bar sub 2? Is it x bar sub 3? You don't know. All you know is that one of them is different. And I discussed previously why this might be of some value to you. Even though you don't know which one it is, it's very helpful sometimes if you have a hundred of these to just know that okay there's some differences and then you can go about trying to figure out which one it is. In any event, you, you just have to trust the uh, the book that this is a, a valuable uh, technique, a valuable skill. So now, section 12-2, what we're going to do there is we're going to say, okay, we've decided, based on the technique in 12-1, we've decided that there is a difference. Now we're going to decide which of the means is an outlier, which one is different from the others. So that's what section 12-2 is all about. Okay, so here we are in section 12-2, okay, so he talks about how the null hypothesis is rejected using the F-test. We therefore decide, hey, there is a difference, and so we may want to know where the difference among the means is. Where is it? Which one? Now, there's several different techniques, several different techniques. We're going to take kind of the little baby step here. We're going to just use two of them uh, that are uh, are commonly used, but are not the only ones, okay? So it's the Chaffe, here's here it is, Chaffe and the Tukey test, okay? The first one is the Chaffe test. But before we get there, I want to look at this one paragraph here on page 661. Uh, it's just before the uh, applying the concepts, okay? It's a very good paragraph that kind of summarizes everything. And it's, he talks about, well, you know, why are there two different tests? How can we have the Chaffe and why do we have the two key? Why don't we just use one test? Well, there's actually several different tests, but these are the ones that we're going to use, okay? Uh, the advantages and disadvantages. The Chaffe test is the most general and it can be used when the samples are of different sizes. Uh, in addition, you can make comparisons taking, you can take the average of x bar 1 and x bar 2 and compare with x bar 3. Okay, so there's some advantages there. On the other hand, the Tukey test is more powerful than the Sheffy test for making pairwise comparisons for the means. Uh, a rule of thumb for pairwise comparisons is you, we're going to use the Tukey test when the samples are equal in size and the Sheffy tests when the samples differ in size. So that's kind of the rule of thumb that this author is claiming uh, to use. Okay. All right. So Sheffy, different sizes. Tukey, uh, same sizes. Okay. That's, that's the, the algorithm we're going to use. Okay. So here we go. The Sheffy test. All right, so we're going to compare x1 bar versus x2 bar, x1 bar versus x3 bar, and so forth, okay? All right, well, here's the formula. Kind of a mess here, right? Okay, so let me just help you with a notation here. What do we mean by this x bar sub i, x bar sub j? What he's referring to there is these are just indexes, okay? So, for example, i and j could be 1 and 2. Uh, i and j could be 1 and 3. i and j could be 
one, two, could be two and three. So the I and the J just refers to which of these X bars are you using? Are you using X bar number one? Are you using X bar number two? And so forth. Okay. So this is just the way that the math guys tell ourselves. Okay, we're talking about the the, the different the different guys, the different uh, X bars. Now I think some authors would have added one little sentence here, and they would have said I is not equal to J. And the reason is because you can't compare x1 with itself. You can't compare x2 with itself. So you probably should keep that in mind that i and j cannot be equal. You know, i cannot be equal to j. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, n, i, and j are the respective sample sizes. So in other words, if, it, if we're talking n sub 2, we got to be talking about x sub 2. If we're talking about n sub 3, we got to be talking about x bar sub 3. So they're the respective sample sizes. In other words, they go together. Okay. And then s w 2, I, I'm not sure how you want to say that. That's uh, the uh, within group variance. Okay. Uh, that's this symbol right here. Okay. So it's kind of a messy formula. Okay. But we, we can deal with it. Okay. So th this gives you this f sub s this can be computed, a little bit of a headache, but it can be computed, and that gives you the test value, the test value. Well, just like we always do on these hypothesis testing uh, exercises, we always have a test value and we also have a critical value. So what's the critical value? All right, so now here's a little tiny problem for you. Or not a problem exactly. Here's a, pro here's a little difficulty. It, it, what you see on the screen is correct. This is the electronic book and it has written the formula down correctly. However, in your paper book, in the textbook itself, for the at least for the uh, 10th edition, there's a typo. Uh, he, he, forgot, he forgot the little equal sign there. So if you look in your book on page 659, you'll see at the top of the page, it just says F with a little apostrophe there, that's called F prime. F prime and, and, and it's missing the equal sign. Uh, and by the way, let me just say, that's how you pronounce this, is F prime. That little thing right there, that's can be a, in, in other contexts, that's like an apostrophe. In math, that's called a prime. So F prime is what we say. All right. Okay, so there, there, how do we know there is a significant difference? How do we know there's a statistically significant difference between these two means, the I and the J, like 1 and 2, or 2 and 3, or 5 and 12, whatever whatever ones you're comparing. How do you know there is a significant difference? It's when the F test value, when this tef, test value, F sub S, when it's greater than the critical value, which is this guy right here, and we're going to have an example in just one second. Now, by the way, what's this CV? This CV, that's the critical value that we already computed earlier when we were doing the F test. So let me bounce back to to uh, section 12-1, example 12-1, the miles per gallon, the one that we were using. If you recall when we did this problem, we did find the critical value. The critical value we got from the table. And I think I, I'm pretty sure I showed you exactly how to do that. So that critical value, that's the same exact critical value from the F test, we're going to use it in the in the uh, Sheffy or Sheffay. I'm not sure how, how to pronounce it. I think it's Sheffay, the Sheffay test. So we, we already have that from the F test, from the analysis of variance. We already have the critical value, and we just make a little modification when we use it for the Sheffay test. So what do we do specifically? We multiply the critical value that we already have for the F test, we multiply it by K subtract 1. And then K, of course, that's the number of groups, okay? Okay, so you know, here, here's an example. I'm going to let you look at that. A lot of computations, but they're not hard. They're just very tedious. And my gosh, you have got to stay organized on these things, okay? So this is the one. He uh, he was in 12-1. This was the automobiles. Okay, so we decided with the automobiles that there was a, a difference, a significant difference. So now he's comparing them. So what you have to do is you compare 
you know, one to two, you compare one to three, and you compare two to three. Okay. So you go through there and you compute the F prime. You get a number for each one of those. Okay. So on the, remember the uh, right uh, in, in example 12-1 with the automobiles, the, the critical value in, in that example for the F test was 4.26. So you multiply it by K subtract 1. Well, K subtract 1, that's 3 take away 1. So 2 times the critical value is 2 times 4.26, and that gives you 8.52. Okay, so getting the critical value for the hypothesis test is very, very, very easy. Well, then it's just a matter of grinding this out. You just crank it out. Uh, you know, you got a formula for it. So write down the formula every time I'm, I'm telling you, write it down, plug in the numbers, and you come up with the answer that you need. So for x1 compared to x2, this is what you get. How does that compare to the f prime? Well, it's less than the f prime. So since it's less than the f prime, it's not significantly different. So mu1 is not significantly different from mu2. Well, let's compare x1 bar to x3 bar crank it out what do you get 8.64 well 8.64 that's bigger than the f prime so it is significantly different what last one x2 compared to x3 you crank that out you get a number 6.60 that number 6.60 is less than the f prime so you say well it's not significantly different okay all right so i think that's hopefully that's pretty clear the two key test you just, is just a formula for that, okay? And uh, again, it's the same idea. You use it after the analysis of variance, after you decide, yeah, there is a difference, and then you make these so-called pairwise comparisons: x1 bar compared to xj bar. One, I, 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 I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Xi bar, x sub i bar compared to x sub j bar. And I and J cannot be the same. So one compared to two, one compared to three, two compared to three. If you had more of these, you just keep on keep on going, okay? All right? So I'll let you read the formula there, okay? All right? Now, the only nuance here, the absolute value, it has to be an absolute value because this could be a negative number, right? The X sub one bar take away X sub two bar, it could give you a negative number. So you take the absolute value because all you really care about is this, this the uh, the distance from zero that you are at. Okay, so it's the absolute value. Okay, all right. And then to find the critical value, there's a table for that. Table N in Appendix A. Okay, K is the number of means in the original problem. That's how many groups do you have this funny symbol here it looks like a v but that's actually a new n u weird i don't know why he uses that but the new is the degree of freedom for this guy which is n subtract k all right the values of k is found across the top row and new is found in the left column okay so here's table n as before we had the examples before we have a family of curves this is for or a family of tables this is for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 this one's alpha is equal to 0 0.10 so it just depends upon which one you're what alpha you're using that will dictate which table you use okay so this problem the the new is 15 the k is uh, 3 so uh, 15 and 3 here's the here's the appropriate row <clears> this <throat> appropriate row here's the appropriate column 3.67. 3.67 is the critical value. Let's see if that's right. Okay, so the author got the same thing at 3.67. That is the critical value. Okay, so when you make these various, you know, comparisons, x1 compared to x2, x1 compared to x3, blah, blah, blah. I said x, but it should be x bar. x bar 1 compared to x3. You get these you get these numbers. These are the test values. You compare them to this, the critical value, and you decide which ones are significant. Okay? So this paragraph right here is kind of a summary. It's well worth your time, and uh, I hope that helped. That's the end of this tape.